Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Midday Market Action. My name is Glenn Tompkins, Senior Instructor here at VectorVest. Glad to be here. Chris is here. My good man, my friend Chris. Man, brother, good to see you. Glad that you're still tuning in. Uh, Boston is here as well. If you can hear me, by all means, I hate that pumpkin. I don't like jack-o'-lanterns. Joey, by the way, happy Halloween. Joey put that pumpkin up there and is going to leave that pumpkin up there. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. But happy Halloween. If you can hear me, by all means, please respond in the chat, preferably with VV Nation, and let me know that I am coming across loud and clear. And on a scary day, some scary things could be happening. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's all about the scariness. That's I'm going to. It's not way scarier than the pumpkin. By the way, that's Joey in the background. Say hi, Joey. Hi, Joey. All right, he's my producer. Glad to have you here. Trick or treat. You know something? I'd rather give you guys more of a treat than a trick. And today we're going to give a treat because the whole idea, the whole emphasis, the whole theme of today is is the Fed on the right track? Is the Fed disconnected? Because he's coming out um, again with his rate increase. Uh, we'll see what happens, but we're going to talk a little bit about that in regards to, you know, in a, on a scary day, could this turn out to be a scary week? And a lot of it hinges upon where the Fed sits and what his policy is going to be going forward, especially knowing everything that's happening in our economy and how it's affecting our com economy adversely. John says, happy Halloween. Glenn is giving out Cafe Bustello and bacon for Halloween tonight. No, I'm not. Them kids come running up to my door, my lights out. I'm I'm not a Halloween kind of guy, just not. Now Boston is, Boston's a Halloween gal, and, and Joey's got three younger kids. They're probably all Halloweenish as well. I'm not all that. I'm not on that Halloween stuff. That's just me. I'm just not. Tushar is here, VV Nation, and hello, Mr. Glenn, Zen Master. Me says hello. So glad to have you guys here. Uh, glad to be here, and we're we're gonna get into it. All right. How many people, you hear the stories that are going on out there, how many people, and I guess I ask this in every live stream, but I just, based upon what I'm hearing in the news, how many people think that the Fed is going to continue to stay hawkish, type of one? If you think he's going to back down to what's, what everybody else is talking about in regards to what he's doing, Type of two. How many of you think he's going to still stay hawkish? Type of one. If you don't think so, type of two. I think he's got no choice, but I'm sure that there's going to be some people out there that feel, there you go, Jim feels that he's going to back off. I, I just, uh, Albert feels that, VP feels that, Zen Master, me, Tushar, all feel that he's going to back off. Alexander thinks so as well. I, I honestly think that if he does back off, what does that do? That keeps inflation running higher, folks. All right. So Ro uh, Robert says, first time, holla, peach, my friend, too. There you go. Well, thank you for being here, Robert. All those brand new people that are here. I appreciate that. Let me let me back that up a little bit. If you are brand new to the channel, I always ask everybody here to take a moment right now. Take a quick moment to share this live stream. Um, um, what's the word I'm looking for, Joey? link this live stream link go up to the top where you are right now share this link copy and paste it uh and share it on your social circles i'd love to have a lot of people here especially with an understanding of what's going on in the market how to take advantage of the market or uh, what's the fed doing how that's going to affect you what inflation is doing how that's in fact affecting you so many things that we talk about in our live streams and i want to get as many people here as i want as you guys can help me to get here with midterm so close it's probably too late for the fed to back off i don't disagree with that and i think that even after the after the midterms i still think that the fed has to get even more hawkish but we're going to talk about that What's up, JDT? Uh, we're going to talk about that. So as you look to the on our main screen, all of the major indices are down after they've been up um, um, for the past few days. How many of you saw the video on Friday that I put up about couldn't the bulls hold on to this market? Type a one in the room. If you didn't see Friday's video, type a two. If you saw Friday's video, type a one in the room because I think that that video was very important for the understanding of what's going on in the market. 
All right. And can the Bulls really hold? And I presented a case for both sides, whether the Bulls can hold on to it, what's going on from a bearish perspective. For everyone who's typing too, Joey put the link in there for you. I invite you to go watch it. It was a short video to the point. I was a short video to the point. And um, I think it, one, won't take up much of your time. And two, I think it intricately, intricately argues the point on what's going on in the market and hopefully answers the question to a certain degree of if the bulls can hold on to this market. I, JD is saying traps everywhere. I, I'm with that as well, man. I honestly think that the overarching long-term story is still bearish, especially with high inflation. Until we can get inflation pushed down to a much usable, for the lack of a better word, level, I still think that um, the whole idea of the Fed's going to, and the Fed said it, I'm going to do everything that we got to do to 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 make this right. So let's get into my news articles. All right, let's do that. And the Fed comes up this week. Oh, I can't. It, my my stream deck won't won't get me to the uh, window. There we go. Wow. See, now that's all in there, and I don't like that now. And, oh, gosh, put it over his face. That's so not nice, Joey. That's so, so not nice. And he's making it bigger. Well, there's the Fed. There's the Halloween Fed, and that may not be so bad. That's the ho If you like that graphic that Joey just put up there, uh, type a one in the room. That's the Halloween Fed, and coming into this week, he's going to talk about, no, nope, not doing that, Mr. Mex Biker. I'm not... I'm not doing anything political. This is all in tune with the the holiday or what we got going on. So there's the pumpkin fed. <laughs> We're going to raise the rates. <laughs> that that's what this reminds me of right now. It that so that's just think about that in the back of your mind. This is scary. All right, this is scary. So um the Fed, I need the story though. There it is. All right. Another jumbo Fed rate hike is expected this week, and then life gets difficult for Powell. Be the whole idea of life gets difficult for Powell, does he really get affected by what other people say? He's not a political, he's not elected or anything. Does he really fall into the whole idea of, of having what, what um, referees say in uh, rabbit ears or antenna ears, referees on the basketball court? Um, and does he just say, forget all of that. I got to do what I got to do, you know? So I'm not sure about, and then life gets difficult for Powell. I think there's a lot of talking points out there saying this um, right here. Morgan Stanley Wilson says, end of Fed tightening. Now that's a story that's out there. And I think there's a lot of stories out there that are, that are going down that path to get people into the euphoria of if the Fed stops tightening, the market's going to take off. And I think that this news is out there for that reason. Not once have I heard um, Powell come out and say, yeah, I'm going to back down. Not once. And until I can hear it from him, all of this is news. All of this is news, and there's a lot of stories. There's a lot of people in high-ranking companies that are putting this out. He says that the end of Fed tightening is nearing. I, I, I don't see that. Until the Fed tells me that, I'm not believing this. And there's a lot of these stories coming around back there. And there's a lot of these stories. Peter says, but then he will walk that back. I'm not even, I'm not even thinking about him having to walk that back, but I, I, don't, I don't think it happened. Why is everyone saying one? I don't, I don't understand what you're saying. Say it again. All right. The spirit of higher interest rates. Well, I, I think that the, the higher interest rates are needed in order to combat um, inflation. Now, you guys know that I'm a big fan of a few different commodities, and one of them happens to be uranium. Poland chooses U.S. to build its first nuclear power plant. I, I did a story not too long ago about um, the, the movement of uranium, and it was a, it was a widely watched, one of, one of my better widely watched videos out there. Uranium is, is going to be a, the way, another alternative for um, clean energy. The other bad side of it is getting rid of the waste, and I do know that. 
But um, I did a story talking about how many countries were starting to put online either nuclear power plants or nuclear generators. All right? But Poland chooses the U.S. to build its first nuclear power plant. Uranium is a, is in a commodity that I guys I need you guys to keep your eyes on. Uh, almost seem coordinated. You're talking about the raise in the interest. You're talking about um, the stories that he's going to back off of uh, raising interest rates. Is that what you're saying, Mr. Mex Biker? Marguerite, welcome. Sounds like Morgan Stanley has too much stock. And again, I think that these people that are putting out the story that the Fed is tightening is going away do have an ulterior motive. I, I honestly think so. All right. Uh, another, another, uh, another stock falling. Paramark stock falls after downgrade as analysts say st uh, strategy is tougher to underwrite. Now, I back this story up because this is one of those entertainment stocks. I back this up with another story. Hollywood braces for more dismal quarter three news as economy sideswipes advertising. So one of the reasons why Paramount could, you know, be pulling back because they're pulling back on advertising. But I also want you to know what com what other companies are in this space. Fox, Paramount, Water Warner Brothers, Lionsgate, Disney. All of these entertainment companies are being uh, uh, scrutinized or look like they're going to be downgraded or because they're backing out because of inflation, they're backing out of advertising. All right, so this is an interesting story that I wanted to, to pay attention to with more especially wanted to look at Paramount. Um, how many of you have seen the meme stocks move, specifically GME, type of one in the room? How many of you are looking at some of those meme stocks? And GME had a nice little move today. All right, type of one, have you been seeing that? So I want to talk about that as well. Short squeeze alert, GME is a few dollars uh, from going parabolic, says S3 Partners CEO. Now, that makes me wonder, does this company have a lot of money in that stock? I showed, or there was a story in afternoon market action that I was going to talk about, but that GME, uh, five big money, uh, hedge funds are pouring into it. BlackRock happened to be one of them, but five big hedge funds are pouring, starting to pour into GME. I'm mixed on this, uh, whether it's GME, whether it's AMC, I am mixed on it because there's a lot of short out there. And I don't know if the big money has the wherewithal to hold on to these shorts to keep GME and AMC and all the meme stocks down. I don't know. And it's the retail investor that's going up against the big money and they're, they're holding their ground. They're not getting rid of their shares. I don't know if this whole, you know, the short squeeze thing is something that's out there and people are betting their lives on the stock jumping up astronomically after it did once. But since then, I mean, I, I think that the stock is down over 30% for the year or more. If you look at it from a vector vest standpoint, this stock is not, none of the meme stocks are any good. If you look at it from a vector vest um, standpoint, but that doesn't stop people from getting into it. And I think that a lot of it is in anticipation that the stock is going to go up one, two, three thousand times. I don't know if that's the right way to be. And I, you know, even from a gambling perspective, that's like, wow. Now, I know my good friend Patrick is heavy on GME. All right. And he's he'll he'll give you all the positive aspects that are coming out of the stock and say, yeah, I'm, I'm not getting out of it. I just don't want him to be one of the bag holders if it comes down to that. All right. And, and, and for me, I, I hope that none of you become bag holders if it comes down to that. Now, could I be wrong? And Patrick is right. And GME goes up and it just balloons and makes people millionaires. Then I'll step back and go, holy smokes, I was wrong. But just looking at the stock on paper, I don't think that I am. All right. Hi, Glenn. Why soon is going high? I. Son, why son is going high? I missed it. I, I don't know. I haven't looked at that stock to 
Um, let me know what was going on with it. I, I haven't the, I, the, the slightest idea, Marie. Uh, um, I don't know. I haven't looked at it. All right. If I have time today, I'll try to look at a few of your stocks, but I, I have no idea about that stock. Mr. Mex Biker says live in Tampa and Disney has gotten so expensive. Many in area no longer going, you know, something else from a Disney perspective, Disney in Shanghai, because of COVID, they shut it down and people are still there. They, they left the people there. How many of you heard that story? How many of you heard that story? Did the people that there's people in Disney in Shanghai and they shut it down with the people inside? How do you do that? Holy smokes, how do you do that? John says GME has an RV of 0.57. There are so many other stocks, but I'm with you on, on that, John. But a lot of the meme stocks are in the same boat, and a lot of people, I think, are just hoping and praying that some of these stocks pop off and they just become millionaires. And I think that's unrealistic. But, you know, it could turn around and could make people a lot of money. Um, another one, Apple iPhone output at major China plant could fall by 30%. Patrick and I differ in opinion. I think Apple is a great stock. Now, Apple hit on earnings and it did well after earnings. It's pulling back today, but Apple out of a lot of the tech companies that reported, Apple survived relatively well compared to a lot of the other stocks in that space. Apple, I still think is a great stock, um, but um, Patrick has brought up stories where they're backing down on the amount of iPhone 14s that they're producing. Well, I got my i14 Pro Max, love my phone, and I knew I was going to get the new phone as soon as it came out, pretty much. But um, um, there's a lot of people out there that, you know, they may be backing off from getting a new phone this year, much less an Apple phone. All right, so those are my stocks that are in the stories today. Let's go take a look. At what's going on in the market? Let's start with there. Let's go to the indices. What are the indices doing? The indices are mixed today. Looks like the Dow is slightly down. Looks like the VIX is slightly up. Not at 30 anymore, but still above the value of 20. There's still a lot of volatility up there. Apple has a nice recurring revenue. I love me some Apple. I love me some Apple. Um, and I'm, I'm always the, the, the first person to say that there's a bad time to be in a good stock. There's a bad time. And I think that the tech stocks are really taking it on the chin right now with what's going on in the market. So the VIX is up, but interesting that people are betting on the lower dollar, the lower dollar, higher, um, uh, volatile stocks, higher risk stocks, I, the IWM Russell 2000. It's up about a half a percent today. The spider is down and the Qs are down. What am I missing? I'm missing one. I'm missing a VVC. Our vector vest composite is up slightly, flat to up. So definitely a mixed market today after the market had been rising. Let's go to the market timing graph. Now, on Mondays here on um, Midday Market, I'll spend some time talking about market timing. But on all, all of our other streams, we're, we're going to refrain from talking about as much from a market timing perspective because people pay for the vector vest system and the market timing. So I'll only do it once a week and that's going to be on midday market. So I'm looking at a one-year graph. I'm looking at a trend line from the November high. All right. We've broken through the November high once, twice, Three times a lady. And this one, we you know, coming off of this low, not as fast or not as much as coming off of this low, um, do the bulls have the opportunity to hold on to this market? I'm going to come back to these trend lines in a second. Then we have from the August high, this trend line has been broken and moving up a lot. Now, here's a couple of levels of support and resistance. Notice that there's four lines of support and resistance from this June to August time period, right? We broke through one level of resistance on the vector vest composite at the value of 52.27. We just recently broke through another level of resistance at 53.94. And today's activity, we're, we're now testing that level of support of 53.94 as a level of support. And then we have two more levels of resistance to get through before we take out uh, both 
the uh, the downtrend from the November high and the August high. So the market still has some work. Now let's zoom in a little bit more. Let's go look at these trend line. Uh, sorry, look at these support and resistance. And here's the run up that we've been in. All right, the three and the eight crossed on what date? The three and the eight crossed to the upside on ten eighteen on the twentieth. It went back down and then it went back up on the 21st, and it's been going up ever since. We had a little bit of a shooting star pattern here with a little bit of follow through. Uh, big day on Friday to the upside where we did break through that level, that next level of uh, resistance of 53.94. And look at the wick of today's candle. Today's candle wick stops right at that level of support. So we're definitely trusting that level of support. The three and the eight still look solid. We are above the August um, the August high and we are above the November high or the November downtrend. So does this market still have legs? Today we have a bearish bullish candle. All right. Everyone doesn't have Glenn money, so they can't buy their new phone. Listen, it's not Glenn money. It's blessed money. I'm blessed. I ain't gonna lie. I'm blessed. As a matter of fact, you know, my side gig, I had a wedding yesterday. My whole, This whole wedding thing is taken off for me. I did a wedding yesterday. Um, so that that's, that's a, you know, it pays for a lot of little things outside of just being in my pocket. So that it's a blessing, JD. That's what it is. It ain't Glenn money. It's blessing. It's blessing money. Uh, I missed, I missed the beginning. Did Glenn go booey? No, what did I didn't, didn't I make a scary laugh, Joey? Didn't I do a scary laugh like this? <laughs> I did that earlier, right? Yeah, so there, exactly. there you go, Mark. I just did it again. Did you get scared, Mark? If the trading thing doesn't work out? No, my trading thing is, do you know, I'm up in excess of like 27 to almost 30% this year with all of that's going on. The trading thing is working. All right, Paul, the, the trading thing is working. I'm 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 doing well. And a lot of it, that's a blessing too, in that I have a system like VectorVest to help me to do that. And I get the ability to help you guys do the same thing. How come Joey doesn't do the scary laugh? Because his face is scary. He doesn't need to do the laugh. He got scary face. Yeah. Can you he, click on this Click on what do you need me to click on? Like that? Yep. Okay. Thanks. So he's he's got scary face. He doesn't need scary voice. Let's go see if the market, if the bulls have still have control of this market. Let's see if we're going to pull away from both of these levels of a downtrend. I will right, we'll see. Uh, I still think that the that the overall um, deal with inflation and interest rates still keeps us down. We'll see. I will right, we'll see. We'll keep our eyes on it. But I'm watching today's bar. It's getting smaller. There's a lot of buying pressure with the big wick at the bottom of the candle. But we're getting more into a doji day or a day of indecision. All right. So that's all. The, and, and if you are a subscriber to the VectorVest software, let's go put this on a three-month graph. Our confirm call was still down. That's the longest, most conservative um call we have we've been down since 826 for those of you swing trading with the DEW we've been down since 829 and for those of you who are looking at the primary wave I we're still up and have been since 1021 I don't think that we get a primary wave down today with today's activity but from a market timing perspective we have a market timing signal for anybody for any type of trader to help you to get in and out of the market at the right time. All right. Now let's go back and let's go take a look at the big news stories that I have. So from the articles that I was talking about today, uh, Fang D, the tech stocks, looking at Apple as well. Fang D, I still think that the tech stocks have been beaten up enough, uh, beaten up because a lot of them, a lot of the bigger ones missed earnings. Uh, so if you want to play that to the downside without buying or selling anything short, FNGD is the contra ETF. Now it's triple leverage though, so be very careful with it, right? It's triple leverage, but it's a contra to play all of the tech stocks to the downside. And look at that, it's up over 4% today. Whereas Apple is down a little bit, down over 1%. Uranium, that Poland story about the nuclear power plant, uh, uranium's down today. I'm still a big fan of lithium because of clean energy cars. And then there's Paramount getting downgraded 
and that's where they stand. So those are my big stories for today. Glenn, do you think the market is waiting on the Fed to report settle down? Yes. I think that um, if the Fed is still going to do, I still think he's going to do 75 basis points. If he does his 75 basis points, the market's going to continue moving down. I don't see the market moving up off of that. Now, we got the midterm elections happening next week and uh, the whole nine yards. I just don't see him with him saying that inflation is unacceptable. And that he let the American people know that his monetary policies were going to cause pain to the economy. I don't think he backs off of that. I don't think he backs off of that. When he also said, we're going to do everything we can to go after inflation. I think that it's a no brainer. I I think that it's a no brainer that he's got to. URA is down 15% in a month. And you know, again, Mac, Mr. Max biker, that, whole idea is just looking at it on paper, knowing that it's an alternative to clean energy, that more people are going to be pushing down that side. Now, keep in mind, a lot of the stocks that I, and I, I'm trading URA and I'm up on it. I, I, I am up on it. I guess it depends on when I got in it. Uh, I, I am in URA, but I'm not, and I'm, I'm transparent in letting you know that I'm in it because uh, I'm not trying to push it and tell everybody to go and get into it. I think that the whole uranium space is going to be good long term, but it takes a lot. It takes a lot of time for these generators and for these power plants to be built. So this is, in my opinion, a slow, steady mover. But as more people move to it, it's going to cause uranium to go up in price. Does that make sense, Mr. Max Biker? That's the way I look at it. Someone sent me an email not too long ago, a couple over the weekend. Bruce, are you here? I don't know if he ever comes to YouTube or not. But he asked me, how do I feel about XROF? I think that XROF is a good long-term play. It's been a tough stock to play. It's been a tough stock to play. I got a lot of shares in it, but I know that long-term looking at what's going on with the company, knowing that at some point in time, if this all works out, that every electric motor is going to go through the hands of XROF is huge, is huge. John says, Glenn, I was looking at the DPO on the DEW timing, and it has not stayed up at this level for a long time this year since we have been in a market where the confirmed calls have been bearish. I am of the mindset that the market moved because it needed something to move it up for a little bit because you can't go down forever, John, right? And I, you know, I wanted to say that this was going to be short term. It's a little bit more longer of an up move than I anticipated. But I still think the trap is there, John. All right. And that's my opinion. All right. Because as you go back to the graphs, the graphs are giving you the full story. What did I say? We were getting more into a doji day. Yeah. And we still are. Is it a red bar? Yes, because it's lower than Friday's close. Are we right at this level of support of 5394 in the composite? Absolutely. If the market's going to move back down, I'd like to see it move back below the November downtrend or even back below the August downtrend. So I'm putting all of those things into perspective to give us more of a perspective of what's going on in the in the market. Folks, if the market is giving you an opportunity to buy stocks long, take it. But I am going to say, just be careful. Knowing that the big, the big picture is inflation and interest rates, all I'm telling you is to be careful. And each time all of these runs have been generated by oil and energy, each and every one of these, what's to say that it's not going to come back down again? I don't think that a market moving up can be sustained by two two industries. If you're going to have a good uptrending market, you need to have a broad-based move. Does everybody agree with that? Type of one if you if you agree with that. I t- type of one if you don't agree with that type of two. I think that that's important to know. I, I think that that's important to know. I like the move. Don't get me wrong. I want the market to move up too. I want to make money too. But I also know that stocks go down faster than they go up. And when the market's going down, there's a lot more money that can be made in a faster time because stocks go down faster than they go up. 
But each and every one of these moves to the upside, folks, have been based off of oil and energy. I don't think that that's enough to give me a sustained run up. You know, even from here, a, a bigger sustained run up. Um, I, I just, I just can't see it, folks. So, nothing. If nothing else, just be careful in what you're doing. If on the days that the market gives you an opportunity to go, go. Other than that, just be careful. All right, what were my big news stories from last week? I think it was only a couple of things. Let's see how they worked out. I had oil. That was it. Let's go back one week and let's go see how that worked out. All right, especially thinking to yourself that if these moves were oil and 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 energy uh, movers, look at that. XOM, Exxon and BP nicely moving up. Those are my only two stories from last week, outpacing the market. This gives more credence to what I'm saying. The moves in the market have been oil and energy moves. Um, got out of SGML at a profit, waiting on my next entry point. What are your thoughts on coal? Um, well, SGML is not coal. SGML is lithium. I still think that if oil is a play, that uh, coal is going to be a play. And I think that coal is going to still be a good play coming into the colder months. Oil is going to be a play. Coal is going to be a play. Natural gas is going to be a play. So when we look at those commodities, I think that when it comes down to the war going on in Ukraine and they are going to be needing um, energy sources as far as us as well, uh, hopefully we don't get into any big oil in impedance because we're going to be freaking screwed. Not only on oil, how many of you have been hearing the stories? It's not just oil, it's diesel. All right, oil and diesel, we got a really low supply on diesel. That ain't cool, all right? That ain't cool. And I'm not going to ask the question, well, how screwed up are we? Because I don't, I don't want you guys to have to get into that kind of conversation. But I don't, you know, I understand from a business perspective, possibly that now that oil gets low, if it gets low, you buy it back at lower prices to fill up the reserves. Or from a business perspective, that makes sense. But the other thing that makes sense is we got more oil than Russia. We got more oil than the Middle East. Give the incentive to the people, because I keep hearing both sides. Well, they, you know, one side says the permits are there, go use them. And the big oil companies go, what the hell? You're not making it and you're not incentivizing me to make it. You know, open up. Why the re, you know why is the production going down? Why are the refineries going away? Because we're, you're making them do so because you're saying, well, we're going to get rid of fossil fuels by X amount of time. So what are they doing? They're saying, all right, fine, then I'll I'll shut down my refineries. I don't need if if that's where we're going to go, then I'm going to put my money where we're going to go. We got to make up our minds what we want to do. I'm all about the electric car. Believe you me, and I believe it's a good place for you to make some money in that spot because the demand on those cars are going up. I'm all for that. But you know something? You ever heard of the thing weaning? How about instead of aggressively saying, we're going to turn it off or we're going to get out of fossil, wean us into that. You know what I don't see talked about, which should be, if you don't want to go full electric, why not go hybrid? We never talk about that. The news never talks about nobody. That's a good melding between the two of the fossil fuel and the electric. Why not go hybrid? But nobody's talking about that. Not a one. And even the companies that are putting out the EVs, nobody's putting out a hybrid. They're all going EV. Man, how about just slowly moving, having a backup plan? It ain't there. And I think that if we try to put all of our eggs into one basket, folks, we're going to have scrambled eggs. We're, we're going we're gonna to have scrambled eggs. So the diesel situation is an unattainable situation set up by the, ah, John, don't put that. Again, you know me. I don't want to get political in here. You know me. Natural gas is going up 30%. And I just did a story on LNG. And somebody said to me, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll take it. Um, I, I'll take it. Uh, said that natural gas right now is already peaked and that it's got nowhere else to go but down. I think that even though the um, the EU has, you know, stored up 
on their natural gas in anticipation of everything that was going on with Russia. And that's what's helping to bring the price of natural gas down right now because they have so much of it. They have so much in supply. I think that if we are in a bad winter, that I think they'll go through it faster than they think. I think. I think. That's what I think. All right. Uh, if you have gas car and an EV in your home, is your household hybrid? Sigh. Hold on, David. That's what that deserves. Oh my gosh. That is so what I, Oh yeah. All right. My stocks today trade. You gave me some farmer are going up. A lot of stocks are going up today, even on the day where we're a little bit of a mixed market and a little bit of an indecision day. All right, so let's go to my big news. I already did the big news. Go to the earnings this week. So I looked at the big, the bigger company earnings coming out. Um, John says, my uncle in Europe says electric rates are high, but gas for home heat is not going up. Hmm. We'll see. We'll see. And that's a blessing. Um, you know, that's a blessing. We'll see what happens. What other industries are doing, v, are doing well vis-a-vis -vis oil? I'm going to talk about that right here my next one francisco so the big companies that have earnings this week i got 47 of the biggest ones i'm going to sort this by uh relative safety these are going to be the companies that are going to have the higher probability of meeting or exceeding earnings uh starting with progressive here's my liquid natural gas company again shania is one of the best stocks in the database that's undervalued great safety fundamentally sound and going up in price. Humana and the healthcare, uh, higher, uh, higher than vessel, overvalued, good upside potential, good safety going up, fundamentally sound. Uh, AMD in the whole semiconductor space though, fundamentally sound, but that whole space, even after the bill turned into a law to bring more of the manufacturing of semiconductors back to the United States, hasn't really kicked in yet because it's gonna take time for that space to to build up in the United States in order to be rock and rolling. So that's that's going to be a long-term play, but the money is there to bring them out. Here's another semiconductor on, or on. Again, fundamentally sound, but this one is not going up in price. Doesn't Crocs need oil to produce their products? Probably. Why, why are we going down that path? I, I don't know. But you know, Mark, you bring up a good question because oil is not only needed for energy, Oil is used in a lot of products. So, Mark, I can't downplay that, what you just said. Uh, I'm with you. You're absolutely right. Sadly, Glenn is looking at price. Am I really? Oh, sorry. Because I went back a week. There we go. I went back a week to do the test on um, my big news from last week. You're sorry. Good. Huh? You're good. What? Oh, I'm good. Yeah. All right. So, I'm good now. Um. So those are the earnings that are coming up this week. Is energy falling on Inc. INC dollars? What is that, Mr. Mike? Um, rookie mistake. Did you just call me a rookie? Ooh. That's what I'm going to say to you, David. Dave just called me a rookie. Man, I, I, don't make me turn this, this live stream around. Because I'll take you right back on home. And, I'll, and we'll keep on moving. Right after I say the spy breaks the 200 EMA. Mark, I have never owned anything from Apple or Crocs. I own everything Apple, and I'm owning nothing of Crocs. All right, let's talk about fastest moving industries. Let's see what industries are moving. Let's go to um, Unisearch. Let's go to Delta Searches Industries. Let's see what other industries are moving. Now, I look at a couple of different things. I, wow, I've out of Oh, I'm only looking at the top five. I'm about to say, what the flying flip just happened? All right. So I'm looking for industries who have a delta or a change in RT 10 days ago that's gone up a lot more over the last 10 days. So I look at telecom fiber optics. It had a change in delta of 7.5%. Look at that move, 66%. So you say, whoa, let's go see what stocks are in here. Let's see what stocks are in, in that industry group. Now, because a lot of people don't have vector vests, I'm only going to look at the top five. All right. If you have vector vests, uh, that search that I just created, I've given it to Lisa so she can give it to the people on the floor that if you need it, they'll walk you through it. 
Um, so I look at this. Glenn is a U.S. Marine. Don't mess with him. That's true, John. You let him know. Hoorah. All right. Um, so what stocks are you? Clearfield? DSCI? Let's go graph these. Let's go see over the last month, which of these stocks are really starting to move? Let me help you out here. You want to know what else is moving besides oil? Let's go take a look. Now, remember, this is over the last five days, though. All right, so this is not major moves. These are moves just over the last five days to get a feel of what's possibly moving. I like Clearfield. Above the 20-day exponential moving average, a little bit of indecision today, but love the rising earnings on it. Um, same thing with DZSI. Look at this. Both of these are in that telecom fiber optics that's on the move, rising earnings. I mean, let's even put this on a three-month. I like the move coming out of a downturn, nicely moving higher. Uh, let's go to the next one. Uh, v, I love the earnings per share, but down there, a little bit of a bearish harami right there. Next one, uh, Infinera. Uh, I'm looking at the price structure. CN, be careful with that. Falling earnings on that. Falling earnings on that. All right, what else? Transportation equipment manufacturing. Let's go. I'm going to see if we can find us one more. And we have, look at the 10 days ago. Look at the 10 days ago Delta on RT and look at the bump. Transportation equipment manufacturing. View the stocks in that industry. And again, for those of you who are not subscribers, I'm only going to show you the top five. And let's graph these over the last month. Wow, look at the move today on WNC. Nice move. Um, let's go put this on a one month graph. Wow. Now I like the I like price structure. I'm not feeling the volume. I'm sorry, I'm feeling volume too, but I'm not feeling earnings. Be careful with that. But it's moving up to the east side. Same thing with GBX. I'm uh, moving up and hitting a new one month high. Love the rising volume. I'd love to see rising earnings with it. And uh just keep your eyes on that. Wow, all of these. Uh Trinity. Transportation manufacturing, new three-month high. These stocks are kicking butt and taking names, folks. Ooh, this one is falling. There's VEV. Where's energy? Energy. Man, how about it made my list today as a stock in a space that's moving, but there's vicinity motors. There's vicinity motors, and I'm watching the earnings per share. Looks good. The stock's just moving side. And watch, watch, Joey. Energy is going to come after the fact. He's going to be like, hey. You want to look at VEV? It made my list as a stock that's on the move. And there it is. I just be careful with it right now. It's coming back off of resistance. It's still sitting in the channel, but I do like it's above the 20 day. Not a lot of volume. Not a lot of volume. I do like the rising earnings, though, but not a lot of volume. And the last one in this list is ASLE. Um, love the earnings per share, mostly for the most part, hitting a new one month high. I like being able to do this search for those people who want to find out what's moving. And Lisa has taken a copy, a picture of this. She sent it out to the people on the floor. For those of you who do have um, vector vests, if you want to be able to do this to find out what's moving, just like I'm doing, uh, this might be a good place to be. All right. All right. Uh, let's go back to my viewers tab. Industry in ETFs. Where's the money going today? Let's go peep that out. Where's the money going today? Ooh, the money is only going into natural gas. Everything else is either slightly in the negative or in the negative. Uranium, as something that I'm looking at, big move to the downside today as compared to where the money is going all the way across. How do I add the earnings release date to my Vector Vest watch list? You don't. It's not on a watch list. You can either do it. Or can you do it in a watch list? Uh, let's go find out. So here's a watch list. Let's go to layout. I don't think you can do it, though. But um, you would right click, click, go out to go down the layout. Boston, answer my question. Can I do an earnings? Re I can't do an earnings date on a watch list, right? I know you can't talk, but type in the room. Um you can't add it to a watch list, only to searches and portfolios. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. So if I had these stocks into a uh, watch list, I could do that. All right. Don't even try, Glenn. Boston say no. Dang. Dang. I or yeah, it's that's it can be added in portfolios. 
All right, so they can be added to portfolios, but not to watch lists. All right, let's go to the next one. Speculative plays. Let's go to look at my speculative plays from last week. All right, how many did I have? I only had three. Let's go back a week ago. Let's go see if my speculative plays I gave you last week worked out. Let's quick test them. Wow, look at that. All three of them made money with WFRD making the most, up 6.5% where the market or the spiders was only up 1.89%. Let's go see what speculative plays I have for you today. All right, we'll click on it. Speculative plays new. Oh, man. I don't think that was right. Something, I screwed up. All right, so I don't know. That, those were my speculative plays from last week. For some reason, I don't think I had speculative plays for you for this week. Oh, uh, that's that was my own fault getting this set up today. Um, let's go one more. Let's do one more thing. I do look at biotech stocks for you on Mondays uh, for the purposes of what biotech companies have some catalyst information. So let me go to uh, and these that I've got for you today all have catalyst information that's due to hit between November and December of this year. So within the next couple of months, there's some catalyst information that's going to push, that could possibly push these. Let's go to my weekly biotechs from last week. Let's go see how many I had last week. I only had four. Let's go take this back a week. Let's go take this back a week. And let's do, wow, look at that. Let's go do a quick test of all of them. Wow, look at that. PCVX over the last week, 30%. XCRS up 10%. All four of them made money. Folks, I put these out to you there for a reason. I subscribe to BioCatalyst, the firm, thing. And I think that it's a good way for you to try to catch on some of these stocks, some of these stocks that have the ability to hopefully make you some money going into next week. So here's my stocks. Take a picture of it or whatever you want. But all of these stocks have some uh, catalyst news that's coming out within the next to <laughs> within the next two months. You don't, Mark. You don't, Mark. All right. So I'm yelling at you, Mark. Glenn, sir, would you please see DRV and GME? All right. How about buying calls against GME? I'd buy puts. I don't know if I want to buy. Well, if you think that it's going to be bullish, then you go buy your calls. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm, a, I'm a, two minutes over where I want to be. But where's my customer one? I know I have one. Speculative plays, customer picks. I'll take about five to ten. I'll look at DRV, comma, GME, comma, give me a couple. Give me a couple. What did you say, Dave? Somebody's with Dave. I don't know what Dave said. I'm with you. I'm, I'm, uh, he's on his way to timeout. If nobody's giving me stocks, I'm giving you five, four, three, two, one. Fine. Those are my stocks that I'm looking at today. Uh-uh, uh-uh. I was asking you. I'm sitting there and I'm asking you. I do. Marie wanted to look at Sun. All right, Marie wanted to look at Sun. Uh, Zim. See, you guys just want to wait to the last minute. You're, you're pushing whatever, Boston. Pete, Pin Duo Duo. Um, BRBK. BRBK. Who else is new? And uh, uh, It's not it. You're looking for Berkshire. All right. Berkshire, there you go. Um, Spy and Apple. I got you, JD. Spy, I don't want to look at Spy. I want to look at Apple, though. Comma, apps. All right, that's it. That's what I got. <coughs> We're going to put these all in a one-month graph. The whole reason why I do that is because I'm thinking that the majority of you who are asking me to look at these stocks are stocks that you own, all right? So I'm going to look at them on the one-month graph. Let's wait for it to come up. Uh, DRV, I got out of it once the market started going up, knowing that it was a triple leverage, and it started and the market started going up, and I started losing some money. DRV, right now, I still think that the real estate market, uh, that this should still be going up, but it ain't. 
So with from that perspective, it's below the 20-day. I'm even giving you a longer period perspective. 20-day exponential moving average, below it. I wouldn't still be holding it now. And you know something? Going forward, if I'm looking at this on a, on a one-month graph, as soon as it drops below the 20-day, I'm giving you a little bit more room going with the 20-day. As soon as it drops below the 20-day, that's a good up to opportunity to get out. If you're still in it, though, and you're like, well, when is it going to come back? At some point in time, if you're taking a loss, you got to, you got to know when enough is enough, all right? So that's where it stands. I'm looking at Zim. Man, does is it still paying that dividend, that big freaking dividend, that dividend? Uh, where's my dividends? This does not on here. Right now, though, from a price perspective, I'm not feeling it. Even if it's paying that dividend, is it worth it if the price is going down and the earnings are going down? If both of them are going down, I'm not feeling Zim. All right, I'm not feeling Zim from a price perspective, from an opportunity to make money, all right? And I'm just looking at the chart, and I am on a one-month chart. Apple, earnings came out on it. It didn't do half bad, as everybody expected. On earnings day, it bounced off support. Nice up candle. A little bit of indecision today, but still above the 20-day. The only day that it dropped below the 20-day most recently was on the day of earnings, but back above it on good volume and earnings per share still looks good. I still like Apple as long as it stays above the 20-day exponential moving average. Let's move on to Berkshire. You know, Warren Buffett is Warren Buffett. It's moving up a little bit down day to day, but the stock is above the 20-day, really moving from the bottom left to the top right on good volume and good earnings. You can't go wrong with it right now until it, until it falls below that 20-day exponential moving average. Apps, digital turbines, a little bit of a sideways move below a level of resistance at 1568, back and forth using that 20-day exponential moving average. If you're in it, this is my get out line right here, which is the solid level of support sitting at 1426. One. Number two, the earnings is falling on it. I'm not feeling it. Remember, earnings is the engine that drives the stock's price higher. Earnings is falling, which means it should drive the stock price lower. Hey, Kenny. All right, Zim has an 80% dividend yield. You still want to own it for the dividend? Hey, type a one in the room if you're willing to own Zim because of the dividend. Type a one. If you think that the price is just not worth it right now, type a two. All right, I, I'm just curious. And, and Mark puts out a good point, 80% dividend yield. Do you think it's worth it because of the dividend type of one? If because of the price, the way that it's not making you money on price action type of two. All right. I think that I see. I think that that's, I think that that's something to, to think about. All right. From a price perspective, I don't know if I want to be in the stock going down if I'm getting a dividend. All right. Pin duo duo. I like the bounce. A little bit of a um, um, a hammer and fading the gap and approaching that 20-day exponential moving average, this may not be a bad time to get in. All right, this may not be a move from a sell to a hold. This may not be a bad time to get in. Um, this is all news. So you ask me, this is this is a drug company. Look at all of this non-real trading. This is all news, and I hadn't checked the news on it. All right, uh, cannabis is up. I don't know why. I don't know why either. Um, I, I don't think there's any legislation out there. And here it is. Look at all of that give back right here in GME. Look at all of that selling pressure. It did break above a level of resistance Friday and it's still above it. And it's a closed candle. Nothing good going on with that whole GME stuff. The price is lower than the open. It jumped up way up here and faded back down on big volume. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying it's nothing really good about it. Put me on the end screen, Joey. All right, so there we go. I looked at all your stocks for you, some of them. Um, happy Halloween, everybody. Um, scary, scary day, but don't let it be a scary week in the market. All right, um, today, Monday, we've given you some market timing stuff to look at um, and what's going on in the market and if the bulls can hold on to this market and is fed on the right side. We talked about a lot of things today. All I want you to do is sift through that, use the information that fits you and apply it to you because everybody in this room trades differently. 
Trade and use this information to fit you how you invest in the market, folks. All right. Don't let me tell you what to do. All I want to do is educate you and fill you in on the information that you need to make the right decisions. Here at VectorVest, we do the work, you reap the reward. So with that being said, adios, arrivederci, ciao, au revoir, sayonara, aloha to all my peeps in Hawaii. Still praying for all my peeps in Florida and in Puerto Rico. Bom dia, salam, shalom, uh, namaste, woo, namaste, yasu. Until next time, folks, see ya.